To begin with, the G20 isn't a group of 20 at all. It's actually 19 countries plus the European Union and often an assortment of guest countries invited along. The idea of the G20 began in the late 90s when the Asian financial crisis rocked global markets. I have been working, as you know, all week long with people from all over the world on the international financial crisis. A meeting was called, but who to invite? Legend has it the Germans and the Americans scrolled down a list of countries, arbitrarily picking and choosing. The first G20 was held in Berlin in 1999 and consisted of finance ministers and central bank heads. Then, almost a decade later, the world faced a far greater challenge when the subprime crisis triggered a near total financial collapse. The stability of the financial system is uh, of paramount importance. And today, there's a heightened awareness of the uh, of fragility of the system. Fear was palpable, and the G20 was turbocharged. Heads of government from the member nations were called to action and met at crisis meetings in Washington, London, and Pittsburgh. This was the golden age of the G20. For a brief flicker of a moment, uh, the world was experiencing such incredible instability, the worst recession that we've seen since the Great Depression, that everyone wanted to at least show the public that there was a level of agreement. During the financial crisis, the G20 leadership pledged about a trillion dollars in new stimulus. That goal was roughly met, but other proposals went nowhere. You have to be honest and say that it's a pretty poor grade over the last several years in terms of delivering on these, these commitments that they've made. From an effectiveness perspective, the G20 is as unuseful as the Security Council. Uh, you're not getting consensus on anything. There's been a proliferation of G's in global diplomacy. You've got the famous G7. Then there's the G10. The G15 of developing countries. There's even a G77, but frankly, that's a bit big to be of any use. In reality, the G20 is thought to be the most inclusive and perhaps useful since it represents around 90% of the global economy. All in all, there is some merit in the G20. It is, in a way, as I've called it, muscle memory. It is that countries meeting together get that practice of working on problems. And so should we have a major crisis again, that infrastructure will be in place and ready to be utilized. It's already on here. The G20 does do effective work at the finance minister level. But I'm a skeptic, because if the recent past is any guide, expect little more than that communique from this weekend's G20. Richard Quest, CNN, New York.